Let's do this, Matthew. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Michael? I'm very good. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, no problem. So uh, I watched the the film and I read, more importantly, I read the story kind of a little bit about the, the creation and the story behind the screenplay. Um, I was fascinated that it noted um, you were their first choice to play the lead role and they sent you the script. What was it like when you first got the story and what drew you to it? Yeah, who would have thought? Little old me, that was their first choice. Um, you know what? <laughs> I, I'll tell you, man, uh, the script, you know, it just jumped off the page to me. Like, I, I felt, I saw so many, like, nods and the winks to the 80s and films I love and, you know, this Spielbergian, Dante, Gremlins-esque uh, opening act in small town. I saw elements of Sin City and graphic novels and Death Wish. And then I saw this crazy Tarantino-esque third act and this journey that my character goes on and just peeling back the onion. And this, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a revenge thriller, right? But I think there's a lot of layers to it. We all know that revenge is the oldest story in the book, right? It's like Shakespeare writing about love and it's just, it's so primal, it's a primal thing. But I love the way in which it was told in this manner in this script and through the character being a pastor of a small town. I mean, when you're posed with this question, uh, you know, what would you do if you had a minute alone? It's kind of crazy to see this journey and what this character has to go through and find in himself and about himself. It's kind of fascinating too, the film opens with this kind of opening sequence and you think it's one thing and then quickly flips into something else. Which yeah, what do you think it was? I'm curious, like you just were like- I was... Well, I was with the girl in the van. I thought it looked like zombies or something. <laughs> Yes, that was all we talked about that so much. Those aren't zombies. And then the movie, she's like, there's zombies out there. And everyone, oh, I love that. I don't want to give it away too much, but look. You'll yeah, see. and then you're curious to see, okay, well, how am I going to get to that point? Yeah. Um, you know, in reading about this, it looks like you really kind of championed getting this film made through some tough circumstances uh, with COVID, you know, beginning shortly after production it notes in there that you even had to step in and direct a few mm -hmm. scenes because of different restrictions and shutdowns what were some of the challenges in getting this film made where to start man oh man um you know look making a movie is not easy right you hear it all the time when I brought this script to Alan Kovac, who's the CEO of a company called Better Noise Music, and we have now we have the film division, he was actually a producer on the movie The Dirt, which is the Motley Crue by uh, uh, so, 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 you know, I, I wanted to make this movie, right? And I've been an actor a long time, so I've been on a lot of sets. But man, when you jump behind the camera and produce and what you have to deal with, and then you throw COVID on, and when you see these these little nuggets and these Easter eggs and a script that you have to now make everyone understand and try to make this movie because you have the script, you have the edit, and then you have, I'm sorry, you have the script, you have what you shoot and you have the edit, right? So to be able to make like some from what I've been hearing from people, they're picking up on what I picked up on when I read the script. So that's an accomplishment, right? To, to, to for me, I, I'm so thrilled. And I, and I do owe Alan. Alan stuck behind me no matter what. We were shooting in several locations. We were in Nevada, LA, Connecticut, New Jersey, over several years with shutdowns, battling COVID, battling egos, battling, you know, a 50 person crew who was so loyal and fought through this. It is hard to make a movie. And, uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, like what I've learned as a filmmaker, which I wasn't actually before this, like I said, I've been on a lot of sets. I know that I can work hard. That's something that I feel like I have. I know I can stay positive through that highs and lows and bumpy roads. Um, but, but uh, really getting this thing on the screen and, and dealing and being a leader has been something that I've just learned from and grown so greatly. Now that it's finished and starting to come out, what's, what was one of the most enjoyable aspects of making the film and seeing it completed? You know, I, I think uh, 
gosh, man, you know, there are so many, like I, I did a lot of work on this character. I always love being the detective as an actor and getting to the bones of this guy and finding all the pinches that make the ouches. It's never about the ouch. It's about finding where, you know, all the layers inside. So all that, amazing. Um, working with the Gear brothers, Darren Gear is a, a dear, dear friend of mine. We've gotten really close. He's been my creative partner in this. And look, I've always learned, I was on a television show called Rescue Me for a long time. Dennis Leary was the star of that show. He created the show. He wrote the show. So I didn't realize what I was taking in, actually, from hanging with him all those years, almost 100 episodes of the show. Um, but he always said, man, if you have the writers there, that's the thing. You know, they birthed the story. So to be able to be connected and, and work with them creatively and, and add a, and bring a lot to the table and ideas creatively, that was amazing. And then the huge cherry on top has been getting to know all these incredible musicians who are on the soundtrack and have cameos in the film. One of the goals of Alan and I was to make this, look, we have like eight cameos from major rock stars, right? And even when I say that, I go, ooh, because that could be bad. I think that could make a movie that might not be taken seriously. But the goal was to do it in a very non-gratuitous manner. So they were actors first and, 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 and have the film be regarded and respected as a genre film first as this movie. And I feel like maybe we've accomplished that because we were, we, we were in Fright Fest, which is arguably one of the biggest film festivals. We opened Scream Fest. We've gotten some good reviews along the way, but working with those guys, I worked with them weeks in advance on the phone, talked about their characters. The way we cast them was very important. So therefore, if you weren't a fan of Five Finger Death Punch, you wouldn't know that the biker gang, you just think the biker gang were actors, right? So that was really important. Um, and, and then, so getting to work with them all and then their music being such an important element that supports the scenes and the objectives of the scenes and the actor so well. And then the major, major cherry on top of that is the Stranger Things guys, Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein scored the movie. We got mm -hmm. them to score it. And when you talk about the wink at the 80s, could you have a better, better team than that with their synths and their vibe to do this thing? So I'd say the music has been a really fun journey for me. Yeah, and it's it's interesting how you put the kind of arcs uh, together. I like how it starts at the beginning with you and your daughters, and you have an interaction with somebody who's not a very nice person who I recognize from Clerks, and then uh, and then you have that kind of tag at the end to kind of bring it full circle. Was that some of what you appreciated about the story? So much. I love that scene at the end. It's so fun. Um, yeah, he's he Skylar Stone's great in it too. He had like his own show on Comedy Central on like years ago. He's a good dude, great actor. He's fun in the scene. That was like the Superman two moment, you know. Um, so yeah, I really I love that scene. And I think what's great is the character. He is a different guy at the end. You know, at the end of the day, I hope people can just go. It's a popcorn fun movie. It's a crazy roller coaster ride. I hope you can enjoy it. And maybe it's a little thought provoking too. And you know, with these topics of mor morality religion justice and uh you know it's 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 definitely on the sort of highbrow story driven side of horror so that's what attracted me a lot too because at heart i'm an actor and i wanted to get into those scenes mark Menchaca, the other he's amazing in it and you know we had a lot of fun all the way around it's it's been like a family member to me this movie and perhaps the most important question is this a christmas movie I think it is. I don't want to be funny. I do. And throughout, I did. It's not being interpreted like that. Obviously, we're getting the push during Halloween when all the horrors come out and everything. But a couple people who did walk out of the theater, we did like exit interviews at some of the festivals. They were like, they they thought it was a, a Christmas movie as well. But, you know, like a die in the in the vein of Die Hard. Right. I mean, we reference it. So what do you think? I, I definitely thought it was a Christmas movie. I mean, it takes place on Christmas. It's got a lot of trappings of Christmas. Yeah. Got a very seasonal uh, punchline there at the end for you. Yes. So I thought that worked out great. Well, cool. thank you very much for your time. Looking forward to seeing this come out and other people getting a chance to take a look at it. Thank you so much, man. Be well. Thank you for your time and your time watching the movie and talking with me. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>